Okay, so hello and welcome back. So the next question that we have in uh, basically with the rest of the exercises is question number 19. And the question is if the lines y is equal to 3x plus 1, y is equal to 3x plus 1, if the lines y is equal to 3x plus 1, and 2y is equal to x plus 3, if these two lines are equally inclined to the line, are equally inclined to the line, to the line y is equal to mx plus 4, mx plus 4, you want to find the value of m. <clears throat> so, so the inclination of, of, let's call this, for example, line number one, line number two, and line number three, for example. And over here, your, the slope of this line is m1, for example. The slope of this line is m1 is m1 which is equal to 3. The slope of this line is basically uh, 1 half. m2 is equal to 1 half because you would write this as 2y is equal to x plus 3 and then y is equal to 1 half x plus 3 halves. So then your slope would be 1 half here and over here your slope m3 is equal to m. So and we said that and we said that basically the that the, the angle between two lines, two intersecting lines, the tan of that angle, tan of theta is equal to the absolute value of uh, m2 minus m1 over 1 plus m1 m2 over 1 plus m1 m2. So so if, for example, if you want to find the inclination between, between line 1 and 3, you would write it as, as tan of theta. Tan of theta is equal to, uh, basically, for example, m minus m3, m, I'm sorry, m minus 3, m minus 3 over 1 plus 3m. The absolute value of that, of course. And then, uh, and then of course there is, the, there is, this is between basically one and three. One and three. Now between two and three, between two and three, you'll have tan of theta, for example. Tan of theta is equal to, and I can call this, for example, theta one and theta two. Tan of theta two, for example, is equal to is equal to m minus one half m minus one half one plus m halves because m times one half is equal to m halves, and so that is basically the the tan of the angles between line one and three and line two and three. Now since since theta 1 is equal to theta 2, as mentioned in the question, then uh, tan of, then, then basically tan of theta 1, then tan of theta 1 is equal to tan of theta 2. So that means that I can write basically tan of theta 1 is equal to this value, the absolute value of m minus 3 over 1 plus 3m is equal to, um, is equal to m minus 1 half over 1 plus m halves. 1 plus m halves. And so I can, I can write this as I can write this equation as um, basically m minus 3 over 1 plus 3m is equal to plus or minus 
m minus m minus one half over one plus m halves and um, so there will be two cases of course here either either m minus 3 over 1 plus 3 m is equal to positive m m minus m minus 1 half over 1 plus m halves or you can say that m minus 3 over 1 plus 3 m is equal to negative m minus one half over one plus m halves so about this case you can simply cross multiply meaning that you can write m minus three times one plus m halves is equal to 1 plus 3m times m minus 1 half and then and then if I I can write m plus m squared by 2 m plus m squared by 2 minus 3 minus 3m by 2 is equal to m minus 1 half plus 3m squared minus 3m by 2 minus 3m by 2 <coughs> and then multiply by a negative 2 <coughs> and then multiply by a negative 2 I'm sorry multiply by a positive 2 to get rid of these 2's in the denominator you get 2m plus m squared minus minus 6 minus 3m is equal to 2m minus 1 plus 6m squared minus 3m and of course this is this is the case that we need to consider after we've done with after we're done with this so then 2m plus m squared minus 6 minus 3m minus 2m plus 1 negative 6m squared plus 3m is equal to 0 And so negative six m squared plus m squared is equal to uh, is equal to um, negative six m squared plus m squared is equal to uh, negative five m squared. So these two are taken care of. Now two and negative two m you can cancel out. 3m negative 3m you can cancel out and then here you have here you have um, negative 6 plus 1 is equal to negative 5 is equal to 0 that means that negative 5 times m plus m squared plus 1 is equal to is equal to 0 and that means that m squared plus 1 is equal to 0 because negative 5 cannot be equal to 0 so what this means is that m squared is equal to is equal to negative one, which gives you which gives you m is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative one, which is which is basically which is plus or minus i, which is uh, which is not basically which is not basically you which we cannot use here. So this is not acceptable. So the case that we can we need to consider now is uh, basically this the other case over here which is this one Let me make a screenshot here to make to write it down here so then we said that m minus 3 m minus 3 over 1 plus 1 plus 3 m is equal to negative m minus negative m minus one half over one plus m halves which i can write as m minus three over one plus three m is equal to one half minus m multiply this by this by the numerator one plus m halves 
and plus m halves. And now if I cross multiply, I'll get m minus 3 times 1 plus m halves is equal to 1 plus 3m times 1 half minus m. And this gives me m plus m squared by 2 minus 3 minus 3m by 2 is equal to 1 half minus m um, plus 3m by 2 minus 3m squared minus 3m squared multiply by 2 you will get you will get 2m plus m squared uh, minus 6 minus 3m is equal to 1 minus 2m plus 3m plus 3m minus 6m squared. Take everything to the one side of the equation. 2m plus m squared minus 6 minus 3m minus 1 plus 2m minus 3m plus 6m squared is equal to 0. And, uh, and so you have 6m squared plus m squared is 7m squared, 7m squared, 2m, 2m. <coughs> so you have 2m, 2m is equal to 4m, 4m negative 6m is negative 2m, negative 6 plus 4 is equal to negative 2m. And then here you have negative uh, 7 is equal to zero. So then you have seven m squared minus two m minus seven is equal to zero. And um, you need to somehow factorize this equation. But before you do that, you need to very quickly basically calculate the determinant of the of the equation to see if there are real roots here. So b squared minus b squared minus 4ac is equal to basically negative 2 squared minus 4 times 7 times negative 7. And you see that you'll get a positive number here and a positive number here. So, so you're good to go. So this is equal to 4 plus um, basically 49. 49 times 4 is equal to... 36 and uh, 4 times 4 is equal to 16, 16, 19, 196, 196, which is equal to 196 plus 4 is equal to 200. So b squared minus 4 is equal to 200, is equal to 200. So I can, um, so what I can do. I can of course factorize this equation or use the or use the formula x is equal to ne negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a over 2a which is equal to basically negative b is, is positive 2 plus or minus, well, square root of 200 is equal to 2 times, uh, well, the square root of 2 times 100, and the square root of 100 is 10, so that's 10 square root of 2. So that's 10 square root of 2 over 2a, which is equal to 14. So I can take this, I can take a, basically, a 2 out here, so I can write this as 2 times 1 plus or minus 5 square root of 2 uh, and uh, over 14. And this becomes a 7. So the answer is going to be plus 1 plus or minus 5 square root of 2 over 7. These are the two values of m that you will get over here. And that is actually the right answer. That is the right answer for number 19, 
1 plus or minus 5 square root of 2 over 7. Okay, so the next question is number 20. Okay, so the next question is question number question number 20. So let me quickly create a new layer here. And okay. So that the question is if sum of the perpendicular distances of a variable point from the lines is all from these lines is always 10 show that p must move on the line so basically you have you have the you have a point you have a point p with coordinates coordinates x comma y and the sum of and the sum of the sum of perpendicular distances perpendicular distances distances um, of of the point P of the of the point P of the point P from the from the lines From the lines x plus y minus 5 is equal to 0 and 3x minus 2y plus 7 is equal to 0 and of course you need to, to take into consideration that this point is 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 very is a variable point meaning that it keeps moving or it can actually move meaning that Not that it necessarily has to move, but it can move along some path or in some plane or something, something like that. But basically, the point is basically perpendicular, is variable. So, and the sum of the perpendicular distances of the point of this point from, from these two lines, number one and number two, is, is always 10. Is, always is always 10 you want to show that you want to show that p show that p must must lie mm, that, that that p must move on a line must move on a line must move on a line Okay, so in order to show this, basically you want to show that the path of, the path of movement of this point is a straight line. And to know much, I mean, to know a little bit more about the situation, you can draw these two lines, of course. So x plus y minus 5 x plus y minus 5 is equal to 0 so that means that that y is equal to negative x plus 5 and so if i have 1 2 3 4 5 as the as the y intercept and slope negative 1 i will get basically this point over this line over here which is basically line 1 over here this is line 1 and line 2 is basically is basically 3x minus 2y plus 7 is equal to 0 or negative 2y is equal to negative 3x minus 7 or 2y is equal to 3x plus 7 or y is equal to 3 halves x plus 7 halves and so 7 halves is 3.5 1 2, 3, 3.5 is one point on the line and, and the slope is 3 halves. So, um, basically, uh, I add a couple more points over here. 3 halves means that you have two units of horizontal. You have two units of horizontal 
some of them some mosquitoes are not really friendly um, so you have for two basically for two units of horizontal change you have three units of vertical change from this point which is basically one two and three meaning that you would end up somewhere over here that is three and that is basically your line over here now as you can see the slope of this line is negative one and the slope of this line is three halves meaning that basically 1.5 now the point the the Now, if I take the coordinates of the point P as, if I take the coordinate, if, if I take the coordinate, the coordinates of point P as, as, as X and Y, now wherever it happens to be, the perpendicular distance of this point is going to be from the two, from the two lines, from these two lines, and this is line two. From these two lines is going to be the sum of those perpendicular distances is going to be um, is going to be 10 10 units so what that means is that this that the perpendicular distance of a of a point from a line is d is equal to the to the absolute value of a is basically we have basically we have the points x1 y1 and we have the line basically ax plus by plus c is equal to zero so then over here what you will get is what you will get is the absolute value of ax1 plus by1 plus c over the square root of a squared plus b squared. So now, uh, so now that means that if I, if I, if I basically, if I think of the distance of distance of p or perpendicular distance of p from from the line one it's going to be well the line one is basically x plus y minus five is equal to zero that means that your a is equal to one your b is equal to one and your c is equal to negative five and of course i i take this i will take the the coordinates of the point P, I'll take them as x1, y1. Can do that. And, um, and so this, this distance is equal to, I call it d1, for example. I call it d1, and that is the absolute value of, the absolute value of ax1. So that is 1 times x1, which is x1, plus by1, which is 1 times y1, which is equal to y1, plus c, which is negative 5, over the absolute value of, over the square root of, basically, 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is square root of 2. So this is the... This is basically your the, the, the distance of the, the point P from the line one. Now the line two now the distance the distance of the point P from the line two is given by basically the line is three x minus two y plus seven is equal to zero. That means that your a is equal to 3, your b is equal to negative 2, and your c is equal to 7. 
and the point P I take it as X1, Y1. <coughs> As take as 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 x1 y1. So again, using the same formula, I can call this, for example, d2, and write it as the absolute value of um, basically a x1. So a times that is three times x1 plus b y1. That's negative two times y1 plus c, which is equal to seven. And I need to divide that by the square root of a squared plus b squared, which is, which is 3 squared, which is 3 squared plus negative 2 squared. Which is equal to the absolute value of 3 times x1 minus 2 times y1 plus 7 and divided by 9, uh, basically this is, uh, let me see, this is 9 plus basically 4 is called the, the square root of 13. The square root of 13, that is t d2. <coughs> so now what we have over here, I know that basically this distance plus this distance is always equal to 10. That means that the absolute value of x1 plus y1 minus 5, since, since basically d1 plus d2 is always equal to 10 units, then you can say that basically the absolute value of x1 plus y1 minus 5 over the square root of 2 plus the absolute value of 3 times x1 minus 2 times y1 plus 7 over the square root of 13 is equal to 10. And that gives you, um, that what that gives you is basically, Okay, I think what I can do, I can write this as the square root of 26. Okay. okay, so what I can do here is that since I don't know really uh, whether x1 plus y1 minus 5 or or basically 3x1 minus 2y1 plus 7 are going to be are going to be positive or negative so I just need to keep them in a in the absolute value the absolute value function and I will write this as uh, basically I will simply write this as the the square root of 2 times the square root of 13 and so basically this gives me the square root of 13 times the absolute value of x1 plus y1 minus 5 plus uh, the square root of 2 times the, the absolute value of 3 times x1 minus 2 times y1 plus 7 and that is equal to 10 and that means that basically that means that um, um, someone need to find some way to uh, Well, you know, the problem is that if, of course, take even looking at this equation over here, you can say that this is the equation of a, of a straight line. Because you have x1, y1, plus, plus, minus, and so on and so forth. 
so you're not going to get a excuse me okay so now what 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 we can do in order to simplify this this equation I got to just I got a phone call from a friend and I had to I had to take the call so now in order to simplify this thing the problem is that you cannot because I mean you can leave it as it is that's all that you can do and of course just by looking at the, at the equation you can see that it's it's the it's the it's the equation of a straight line because these are first degrees of x and y first degrees of x and y and then some constant is being multiplied by this whole thing some constant is being multiplied by this whole thing so you can um basically um you can um now there is there is there is two ways to basically um so basically what 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 uh, basically what is what, what what i mean to say is that of course this is the equation of a line now if you want to actually write it as the as as the equation of a line meaning that x times something plus y times something plus some constant you have to make some assumptions right now i don't really know if x1 plus y1 minus 5 is going to be positive or negative or 3x1 minus 2y1 plus 7 is, is going to be negative or positive so i cannot just write them as mm, i cannot take them out of the 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 absolute value function the two functions that we have here what i can do is that if is that assuming that assuming that basically x1 or let me actually write it this way okay so now basically what how you can make that assumption to simplify your, your equation this is important in the case of absolute value functions so suppose that you have Suppose that you have the absolute value of x and you know that by definition the absolute value of x is equal to x if basically x is greater than greater than zero and the absolute value of, of x is equal to zero is if basically if x is equal to zero and and the absolute value of x is equal to negative x if x is if x is less than zero if x is less than zero so that means that if i basically put these three together i can say that if the absolute value of x is equal to basically x if x is greater than or equal to zero these two put together and it's equal to negative x if x is equal to if x is less than zero okay so what what that means is that for example if i write the absolute value of x is equal to 3 that means that x is equal to plus or minus 3 plus or minus 3 and and x is equal to plus 3 and x is equal to x is equal to plus 3 if x is greater than or equal to 0 and s and x is equal to negative 3 if x is less than 0 based on this and so this expression i can write it as x this expression i can write it as positive x is equal to 3 this expression i can write it as negative x is equal to 3 so i can do the same thing over here meaning that assuming that meaning that assuming that basically now I have to make these assumptions so that I can basically take these out of the absolute value function otherwise I could not. So now assuming that and and let me write another step before I do this. Since these basically x1 y1s are are actually on now I forgot what I was doing here. 
So basically this represents basically the path of that point P1, P X1, Y1. So if I assume that these, uh, basically these uh, uh, X1, Y1 are actually is a point basically on some, on some straight line, if I make that assumption, meaning that if I, if I think of X1, Y1 as some general X and Y in some equation, I can, instead of x1, I can write, write, I can write x, and instead of y1, I can write y. Otherwise, x1, y1, what they do is they represent a specific point, a specific point, for example, p, whose coordinates are x1, y1. But if I say there is some point, for example, p, with coordinates x and y, that means that this, these, these are some general x and y's, and they, they just can keep changing uh, they can they just can keep changing and um, this is some this this would be some general case but this is a specific case only a point and your x y y one cannot change could not change <coughs> so if i assume that that this is a variable that x one y one is a variable point that p is a variable point then uh, of course i could instead of x1 y1 i could write i could write x and y meaning that i could write basically the square root of 13 times times the absolute value of x plus y minus 5 plus square root of 2 times 3x minus 2y plus 7 is divided by basically square root of 2 square root of 13 is equal to 10 right and and so now assuming that assuming that basically x plus y minus 5 is greater than or equal to 0 and 3x minus 2y plus 7 also is greater than or equal to 0 then I can then I can write them as basically Meaning that when we said that, for example, when I had the absolute value of x was equal to 3, I could write x is equal to positive 3 if x is, if x was greater than or equal to 0. Or I could write positive x is equal to 3. So I'm going to do the same thing over here, meaning that assuming that to get up for it just a moment so assuming that basically x and x basically x is greater than or equal to zero i can write it this way meaning that assuming that these two expressions are greater than or equal to zero both of them i can write this expression as basically square root of 13 square root of 13 times positive x plus y x plus y minus 5 x plus y minus 5 plus the square root of 2 times 3x minus 2y plus 7 meaning positive of this of this expression divided by the square root of 2 square root of 13 is equal to 10 and so what that means is that basically square root of 13 times x plus y minus 5 plus the square root of 2 times 3x minus 2y plus 7 is equal to basically this is the square root of 26 square root of 26 so that would be 10 times square root of 26 and of course you can multiply these meaning that you can write square root of 13 times x plus the square root of 13 times y minus square root of 13 5 times the square root of 13 plus 3 times the square root of 2 times x minus 2 times the square root of 2 times y 
plus 7 times the square root of 2 is equal to 10 times the square root of 26. So do you have an x over here and x over here? So then you can write 13 plus 3 square root of 2 square root of 13 plus 3 times square root of 2 times x. And then you have a y over here. You have a y over here. So you have square root of 13 square root of 13 minus 2 times square root of 2 times y. And then over here you have basically plus 7 square root of 2 minus 5 square root of 13. 13 is equal to 10 times square root of 26. And I'm going to, 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 to take this to the other side. Meaning that I'm going to write this minus 10 times square root of 26 is equal to 0. And as you can see this is your A. This is your B. And this is your C. And so what that means is that basically the X and Y are actually moving on a straight line because this is the, actually the equation of a straight line. And, and of course if you over here we, we made the assumption that these two expressions were greater than or equal to zero. You can also make the assumption that these expressions are less than zero and then over here you should write the negative of this whole expression meaning that for example this becomes negative x negative y plus 5 or this would be negative 3x neg plus 2y minus 7 and then the whole expression will change a little bit as far as the signs are concerned and then you would get some expression like this and in that case too you will realize that the point you would realize that the point were actually moving on on a straight line so you you would basically find actually two two different stra straight lines basically because uh, because the question was actually because basically p is the p is basically the perpendicular distances of the point p from those two lines meaning that meaning that the perpendicular distances of of the of these of these of these two lines basically if you, you can imagine that for example you had a point over here is perpendicular to this line also perpendicular to this line if they go if the point goes over here it would be perpendicular to this line perpendicular to this line goes over here again perpendicular and then you would get some straight line like this and i suppose you would get another line like this and that would be you would have essentially two such lines and that's basically the whole story here Okay, so the next question that we have is uh, question number 21. You see that each of these questions actually take a long time to solve, but well, they are necessary, really necessary. So you want to find the equation of the line which is equidistant from parallel lines which is equidistant from two parallel lines. Find the equation of the line. You want to find the equation of the line. Equidistant. Equidistant from parallel lines. from the parallel lines 9x plus 6y minus 7 is equal to 0 and 3x plus 2y 
3x plus 2y plus 6 is equal to 0. So basically you can tell that these lines are parallel from the from basically these coefficients because <coughs> because you can see that over here a basically um, in the case of this line for example if I call this for example a1 b1 a1 and b1 and if I call these two a to b2 and form ratios of these you see that a1 to a2 is equal to is equal to 9 to 3 which is equal to 3 b1 to b2 is equal to 6 to 2 which is equal to 3 that means that a1 to a2 is equal to b1 to b2 that means that the two lines are paired and of course this is not equal to this is not equal to c1 to c2 because that's negative 7 to 6 if if basically this was equal to c1 to c2 then you would essentially have the same lines okay so so now let's um, uh, we had a formula that told us about the about the the distance of two parallel lines I suppose there was a formula let me see where what that was I don't remember that anymore Okay, so the distance between two parallel lines, as we, we said that basically we know that slopes of two parallel lines are equal, therefore two parallel lines can be taken as taken in this form and then um, C1 minus C2 over 1 plus M, M, M squared. So if you remember, let me let me show you how to how to derive basically the distance between two parallel lines because we have done this a uh, quite a long time ago and, and and you might actually have forgotten that. I have forgotten that. So suppose that you have you have these lines over here. So for example you have this line over here and you have this line over here. And suppose that these lines are parallel. Okay, so if 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 these two lines are parallel, I can call the, this line, for example, y is equal to mx mx plus c1. And I can call this y is equal to mx plus c2. Basically, the same the same slopes m and n. And so this point over here, we can you can find the the x intercept of this line which is negative c1 by um, negative c1 by m meaning that meaning that for example meaning that basically we said that if a x plus b y plus c plus c is equal to zero then the slope of this line or basically the, the x-intercept of this line is going to be this the we, I can I can write it as x over a plus y over b is equal to 1 and in this case c was was equal to negative c to something which I don't remember anymore let me see what that was
Hmm. Okay, not this one. Okay, so basically I can write it as x to a plus y to b is equal to 1. And so that was the same thing as in the process that we got this. We got basically what we did was that x over c over negative c by a plus y over negative c by b is equal to 1. So that means that your, that means that your, your, your x intercept or a is equal to, this is your x intercept. This is your x intercept is equal to negative c by a. Negative c by a and your, your, your y intercept b is equal to negative c by b. Negative c by b. So what that means is that now if I, of course you know that, um, of course you know that when I write, when I write this line, when I write this line in the form uh, y is equal to, y is equal to mx plus b, mx plus c for example, not, not capital C but, but lowercase c, if I write this line as, as mx plus c, m is equal to negative a to b, negative a to b. Okay, so that means that the x-intercept, your x-intercept is actually, so if basically if m is equal to negative a to b, um, so if I were to basically now this is the x-intercept of my line, and if I, if I were to if I were to basically write it in terms of m, instead of instead of basically a, I, or you can see that if I cross multiply here, negative a is equal to negative a is equal to um, negative a is equal to m times b. So I can or a is equal to negative m times b. So instead of a over here, I can write negative m times b. Negative m times b. So a is equal to negative c over negative m times b. And so if I cancel these out, No, because you're not stupid. 